So types of nucleic acids, DNA and RNA, I'm sure you know about it, it's very easy. DNA and RNA, let's just figure out the difference. You know about this point, right? The second carbon, absence of O, presence of O, ribose, deoxyribose. Now see, in case of DNA, the bases will be thymine, cytosine, adenine and guanine. But here, instead of thymine, it will be uracil. Please, please remember this. It's uracil, cytosine, adenine and guanine. Got it? So that's a major difference. Well, let's see the structure of the DNA. How the DNA forms a double-stranded structure. Okay, let's see how it forms a double-stranded structure. Simple. Just look into each of these units. These are each of these units. Okay. So just forget. So basically, this one is one strand, this one is the other strand. Just look into strand A right now. So the strand A towards me. Okay. So you see, you have understood how the nucleic acid the chain is forming by joining nucleotides so this is one chain chain a let's imagine this is chain b now chain a and chain b are also interacting with each other through hydrogen bonds and see purine pyrimidines they form the hydrogen bonds over here so two polynucleotide strands joined together by hydrogen bonds between purines and pyrimidines this happens always between the purines and the pyrimidines they bond each other they join each other by hydrogen bonds that is actually what gives the double stranded structure and it's anti parallel. You know why anti parallel? You see the direction of this strand. Here it is 5 prime because the 5 prime end is freer. Here this one is 3 prime because the 3 prime end is freer. See strand A. Okay, well, I told you this is imaginary naming A and B. I'm just using so that I can explain you properly. So see strand A. Here the 5 prime end is free. Here the 3 prime end is free. So that's the reason it's anti parallel. Got it? I hope you got the naming. If it is 5 prime, remember the other strand, this end will be 3 prime. If it is 3 prime, the other strand will be 5 prime. That's it. That's anti parallel nature of the DNA. Got it? Okay. Let's see the bonding. You see, purines always bond with pyrimidines, always by forming hydrogen bonds. You see the hydrogen bonds over here? So these are the hydrogen bonds which have formed. I'm sure you know about hydrogen bonds. You've studied this, or rather, you're studying this in your chemistry chapters. Well, let me show you, show you a bit more. So, pairing of the nitrogen bases, which base pairs with each other? Does this happen randomly? No, there's a sequence. Adenine always pairs with thymine, but in DNA, if I talk about adenine, will pair always with thymine, and adenine will pair with uracil in RNA. See the difference? Because in RNA, it's uracil, not thymine. Okay? So, adenine AT. AT. And you know the bonds, double bond. Here, AU, again, double bond. AT. And the other one, the other pair, can you see two double bonds over here? Other bond is, other pair is the G, triple bond C. Can you see triple bond? So, thymine pairs with adenine in DNA. Uracil pairs with adenine in RNA. Guanine pairs with cytosine, GC, in both DNA and RNA. This happens both in DNA and RNA. Got the pairing? Remember, A double bond T, G triple bond C. Questions can be asked. See, there's a small display of how the chain formation as well as the anti nature happens quickly. Check, take, take a look. See, this one is this nuclear is coming. See here, the bond formation will happen. See, can you see triphosphate? Two phosphate is released. And then with this, it has joined the phosphodiester bond. Again, with the hydrogen bonds, it's what is happening? The pairing. Okay. The antiparallel stand is forming. Do you understand? See, wow. Three are there. Yes, two are removed. One is left. And that forms the phosphodiester bond. And the hydrogen bonds are happening, which helps in making the double stranded molecule. Got it? That's a very nice demonstration. Let's move into this. The structure of BDNA. Okay, what is BDNA? I'll, I'll explain it. Watson and Crick model. These are very famous pers person. These are the two people who actually describe this. The describe made up of two polynuclear chains exists as a double helix. So DNA exists as a double helix. Can you see the double helical structure? Yes, double helical structure. Two strands. You know what? It is similar to a spiral staircase. 
spiral staircase. I'll show you. Show it to you. Wait. Wait for it. See, DNA double helix, double helical structure of the DNA resembles a staircase. The spiral staircase. Okay. Just imagine you are looking from the top, the spiral staircase. You, this is the staircase. And if you just twist it, twist it. Each step of the ladder represents a base pair. Yes. Here's a base. Here's an nitrogenous base. Here's an nitrogenous base. Or rather, I can say the nucleotide and the hydrogen bonding. GC. AT. Well, let's see. I told you. See, it lo looks like a spiral staircase. At each step of the ascent, the strand turns 36 degrees. This is very important, you know. Okay, let me tell you what is the BDNA. Okay, do it with me. Okay, do it along with me to understand what is BDNA, you know. There are many forms of DNA. Here, what we will be concerned about is the BDNA. This is majorly known as the right-handed DNA. Why? Take, a, take your right hand. Do it like this. Okay. Curl it a bit. This side. Okay. From your right towards your left. Curl it a bit. And do this. So basically, this is a right-handed double helix. That is the BDNA. So this DNA molecule, double strand. Let's imagine this is one strand. This is one strand. And if it curls like this, it's curling from my right towards the left. Come on, do it with me. Right towards the left. That's a BDNA. Got it? Very good. You know, the strand turns 36 degrees. One full turn of the helical strand would involve 10 base pairs. In BDNA, if you talk about. So from here till the next, the same point. This is one full turn. You know about this? Okay, this is one full turn. And it involves around 10 base pairs. See here. Look at this. So for one full turn, maybe from this point to this point, this is one full turn, right? Imagine 3D. That's very important. Imagine it. 3D, one full turn, they will involve, it will involve 10 base pairs. Now see, can you see the base pairs over here? You know the distance between two base pairs? It's 3.4 angstrom. Angstrom. Okay. This is the major groove. Can you see a bigger gap over here? This is the minor groove. Can you see? Smaller gap, and this is the major groove. Got it slowly, take it slowly. One complete turn, 34 Amstron. If it's very simple calculation, see between two bases, it's 3.4 Amstron. And I'm telling in one turn, there are 10 bases, and 10 multiplied by 3.4, it's 34 Amstron. Got the calculation? Easy? Yes? Great. You know, you're learning. A lot of important and difficult concepts today. Fine. Okay, okay. One more thing. So the diameter, if you just see from top, the diameter will be around 20 Armstrong. And don't forget, I'm specifically talking about just the BDNA. Well, the distance between two base pairs is 3.4 Armstrong. The double helical turns after turns after every 10 bases. This distance is called the pitch. Okay. So this distance, so one turn. Which comprises of 10 bases, base pairs rather, because two strands I'm talking about, double stranded DNA molecule. So this distance is called the pitch. Okay? Great. So, well, this is the overall structure of the B DNA. Come on, take a look so that you understand it. So, what are the important things? This for the B DNA, distance between two ba nucleate bases. Then one turn, how many bases? 10. So total one complete turn will cover how much distance? 34 Armstrong. Fine. Major groove, the larger gap. Minor groove, the smaller gap. Gap. Diameter is around 20 Armstrong. And don't forget, we have talked about the BDNA.